those things still work, guys? Oh, man. Happy to be back. Cincinnati Soccer Talk winner, retirement edition. Uh, FC Cincinnati drags us out of the uh, hibernation cave with a bunch of flurry of news this week and uh, starting to get fans a little bit excited, a little bit buzzed around here. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals are out, out with the old and with the new. Let's get some uh, soccer talk going on around the city. I am back with a slew of characters I just saw because uh, we had a little get together here uh, last week, this week, sometime around there. And uh, good to see you guys again. Fresh faces. I'll start with you, Justin. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing a lot better than uh, sitting there watching Michigan uh, trounce. Uh, Washington in the national championship game. Harballs, man. No one likes Harballs. <laughs> and yet, and yet, we have to like. If you pay attention, if you sorry, if you're not, if you're only a soccer fan, but if you pay attention to to the other football, you, you have uh, his brother who's probably going to trounce all over the NFL, AFC in the next couple of weeks. So, it could just be the the uh, winter of Harbaugh, which means, man, I can't wait till spring. Jason, how you doing? Man, I am doing a lot better than that guy at the Bass Pro Shop down in uh, Alabama. I'll tell you that. Woo! <laughs> I thought that was you for a second. You know, it, we have a similar build. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that got stuck in a vase or something? Oh, no, but that was hilarious, too. He's fine. Oh, no, you're talking about the guy that jumped in the water. <laughs> yeah, the guy. And, you know, it's in his defense, he was having a really bad day. But haven't we all thought of that? Like, if you've ever been to a Bass Pro Shop or a Cabela's, you just look at that thing and you think, man, if I could swim in that, that would be so fun. <laughs> I, I want to I do fishing in it. That would be awesome. Just throw but out the line cheating. right there. Yeah, that Didn't would the guy go cheating. buck naked now? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, exactly. I would wear a suit. Yeah, yeah thank you. I want to swim in that and I want to be naked or two different things. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that. Holy cow. Uh, well, there's the voice of Brian Weigel. It was good to see you again, my friend. Yeah, pal. Had a great time hanging out with all you guys. Um, you know, just blessed to be able to get into season nine of this this great journey and uh, have a great cast of characters kicking off the season tonight. Going to have Eddie from uh, Riados 90 on here in uh, about five, ten minutes. Can't wait to, uh, to talk about uh, the future of Brandon Vasquez. Oh, yeah, Brandon Vasquez uh, out the door. We've seen a lot of questions. Does Chris Albright know what he's doing? You know, he only finished first place last year. But uh, we have we have all kinds of uh, things to slurry around. I'm going to leave tonight um, in the rundown up to you, Brian. You can take oh, us. You can, you can start us where you want us to start. Uh, we're going to we're, we're, we're going to change things up a little bit here in 2024. That's subtly uh, Boston implying that he did not read the rundown before hopping on <laughs> eight minutes ago and trying to remember what buttons. To Why push. is it always got to be Boston didn't prepare? You, you oh. could do. I, I know the I know you have the, a track record back to March to match day, man. I, just, I, I know that you met Mike at Apollo and you really just wanted to do an ad read. That's what I heard. That's what I. OK, heard. go ahead. Uh, Mike, uh, dude, that was, he was great. He, him and, uh, Mike showed up at our CST party and brought his, I think two sons and, uh, they became BFFs quickly with my son, Brian. So that was a, that was a cool little moment there, but, uh, to celebrate the FC and their amazing 2023 season, Apollo is giving away furnace tune-ups. So give them a call or submit a scheduling request online to tell them you're a CST listener. Who wants a free furnace tune-up? I know it is going to get really cold beginning next week. I think 20 degrees on Monday. So uh, if always, if you're looking for a premium home service company for your plumbing, HVAC, or electrical needs, check out Apollo, apollohome.com. And if you're listening to this and you're from Columbus, do not call. Check them out, apollohome.com. I do that better than you, Boston. Right Sounds now. better. Why well, I just throw it to you? Um, oh goodness gracious! So let, let's talk about the news before we, we bring Eddie in here, real quick. The big news this past week. I don't think it surprised any of us that it happened, but just I, I guess, and, and I said this on his show is is where Brandon Vasquez ended up going is to uh, the premier, one of the probably two premier clubs right now in, in Mexico and Monterey. So, Jason, what was your first? Uh, you know, reaction when you start hearing that news uh, around the first of the year. Yeah, not not surprised, really. I mean, 
maybe slightly surprised because I think a lot of us were thinking he was going to wind up in Europe. And then there at the end, you saw teams like I think it was Brentford that popped up there at the end. I think that was just pie in the sky, really. Um, but I'm happy for him. I mean, it, it, Jose said in the chat, I mean, uh, Monterey is is an elite Liga MX team. They they are really good. They are always in contention in Liga MX, and they're always in contention in what is now CONCACAF Champions Cup. And they're, if you saw the internet today, they were treating him like a celebrity, which mm-hmm. uh, I think that was kind of a little bit of shock for Brandon, uh, the difference between the media attention you get here in little old Cincinnati, Ohio, and then going to one of the best teams in Mexico, kind of that juxtaposition kind of took him for a loop. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you can give Monterey a little bit more credit at that. They're, they've already qualified for the 2025 FIFA Club World Cup yeah. based here in, in the U.S. And, I mean, that's the elite of the elite, and everybody wants a ticket to that table, to that seat, and they're part of it. So, I mean, that's that's great for them. Um, they've been killing it. I think they had a treble a couple of years ago. They've won several league titles. They've won, I think, back-to-back CONCACAF Champions League. So uh, it's, it's a great spot for him. Hell of a stadium. Uh, I know there was, you know, a lot going on in his life, Justin. Um, you know, of course, you know, the importance of making this decision early, I mean, allows FC Cincinnati to get replacements line up but you know how do you think it's going to affect our roster a little bit more than that i don't think it affects us too tremendously i think that some of our pieces kind of mirror what brandon vasquez brings to the table obviously in 2022 he was a great goal scorer he was able to put away uh just about anything that came his way from brenner uh from barriel and from uh ucho acosta but i don't think it affects us tremendously because i'm sure this has been a decision that's been in the works for over a year. Uh, and, and Albright and company have had plenty of time to scout out new replacements. But that being said, when we're starting training camp right now, we still have pieces like Santos and like uh, uh, having Bupenza come into the, the club has really helped us out because they kind of can mirror that similar style if that's what FC Cincinnati wants to continue to go with. Um so I, I don't think this, I think this has been in the cards for quite a while and uh, FC Cincinnati is in position to react to this very well. I mean, he was, he asked to go last year. He had an offer on the table. He, I think he wanted to take it, but uh, FC Cincinnati told him you're under contract. We really need to finish the year with you. We've got a good shot at this thing. He understood and, uh, and he waited to buy his time. So that, you know, that leaves FC Cincinnati with zero options because they have to let him walk now to uh, wherever he wants to walk. Now I feel for Brandon a little bit, his heart definitely was wanting to go to Europe. He said so himself multiple times. So uh, overall, I don't think he's, too terribly disappointed i mean at the end of the day the man got a big fat raise and uh and a chance to prove himself on another uh if you the fc cincinnati of league mx maybe uh, i'm gonna disagree a little bit with justin i think we're gonna you know he, he's gonna leave a huge impact um a huge hole that's gonna be tough to fill i mean you can't just go out and plug any uh you know random guy in mls out there i know we're talking about Corey baird uh, but he's not a like for like guy with Brandon Vasquez. So I think there's going to have to be something else, uh, you know, another option for, for Chris Albright to go out and get the, the thing I do love about this whole deal is how we can take his transfer fee and apply it, you know, towards the salary cap with a $1.2 million gam infusion. So that allows us to do certain moves, which we'll talk about later with miles Robinson and buying down other players to accommodate for Bupenza's cap hit. So, I mean, I think it's 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 tremendous for the club, and it's going to set us up for, you know, if you would have told me, okay, we're losing Brandon, you can bring in one striker, but you know, now if we can bring Corey Baird, another, and then another rumor that we'll talk about later, man, I mean, this move is at least for 2024 is, is a, potentially allowing us to come back with with even more offensive firepower. Uh, you know, God, God bless Don Baji, but you know. Uh, Don Baji president fan club here, but I mean, it's, <laughs> he wasn't banging in goals. And I think one of the things about this too, we've seen this talked about a lot and we might even get into this with our guests later, but there's been some talk that this is going to hurt Vasquez's potential to make it into the U S men's national team roster. And I don't necessarily think that's true. I, I agree. He's, 
already been on the roster. We know how much Burhalter likes his guys. So if you get in the good graces of Triple G, you're kind of in there. <laughs> well, he and, said he said he was going to call him in, but he wanted to yeah. allow him to get down to Mexico. Yeah, and this is not as good as MLS has become. And I, I consider it a top 10 league in the world. Liga MX is still slightly better than MLS. He's going to face a lot tougher competition playing the likes of Chivas and Tigres and Club America. And I think Cruz Azul was good. I'm not sure. But, you know, teams like that, then he is playing the New York Red Bulls 17 times a year. That's going to help him um, hopefully break into the men's national team. And we've, we've have USMNT players play in Mexico all the time. This, that isn't a foreign thing. And, and, no, and, I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. sorry, if I can jump in there. I mean, Zendaya's, we were all freaking out about getting him on the roster. Like what he was doing with club America, everybody was losing their mind about him. And now all of a sudden MLS players, apparently to some pundits, uh, can't go to Liga Mekis and make an impact. So I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Jason. That's ludicrous. Well, a question I'm going to ask Eddie when he gets on here in a couple of minutes uh, is about how much opportunity Brandon's going to get. And, you know, I know we've had this discussion with is the Air Divisi better than MLS? And, you know, the top five, six clubs certainly are. And same thing with, M you know, Liga MX. The top five, six clubs are better than most MLS clubs. So, but, He's going into a pressure pack situation and he's going to probably get to play. How many clubs in Europe can say that? Ask like, Zach Steffen. Yeah. I mean, so he can go to Munch and Gladbach, but he's going to be the fifth guy, maybe starting on this roster where he's an $8 million signee for Monterey. They're not going to put him on the bench. They're going to give him every opportunity to get, get out there and make his money back so they can sell him on or later, which I think will then turn. Show Greg Burhalter, his style might play very well to a Copa America mm -hmm. uh, opportunity in this summer. And same thing with I say with Miles Robbins later on. <laughs> Playing time right now in the next six months is ginormous, and I think that's a beauty about this this move with uh, Monterey. So uh, I don't know. We can probably talk a little bit more on the back yeah. end of this interview. Uh, but uh, you guys ready to bring on Eddie? Sure. Let's do it. All right, guys. I had the uh, the the fortunate opportunity to be on uh, a, a great show this past week to discuss our man Brandon Vasquez and what he can bring to Monterey. But uh, I would like to my, my man Eddie here is going to return the favor and come on to to our show this week and uh, talk about what situation that that Brandon's actually stepped into. So, Eddie, how you doing, my man? Nice to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I was listening on the back end of your conversations right there. Uh, hopefully this is the last time you guys, or we have a nice chat here because we, you know, we're on a collision course to face each other in the round of 16. So hopefully <laughs> this is uh, a preview to the preview that, you know, we, we, we can have another conversation down the, you know, another month or two. Yeah. Sure. Speaking of Brandon Vasquez, uh, we have to get past him first, I think <laughs> Cause we're on a collision course for Monterey. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, no. It, I mean, it's been, um, it's been a wild couple of days, uh, you know the transfer rumors. It's it's it, it, it can go either way with these things. You you want to believe some stuff, and then you you're kind of hesitant to believe about this stuff. But that's how I was with the Vasquez situation. I was, um, I was kind of like, I don't know if FC FC Cincinnati was going to let him go because obviously you have the Champions uh, Champions Cup or whatever Concacaf wants to call it now. Uh, so I was kind of I kind of caught off guard with with this transfer, but. Uh, you know, I, I I welcome it. He's a California guy. I'm a California guy, so I got to support him. Right. So, Eddie, Eddie, tell us a little bit about your show and how you uh, started to cover Monterey. Yeah, I mean, it, it 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 all started with just creating a Twitter account. You know, if you want to call it a Twitter stand account. Um, <laughs> did I, I I did it? I, I started creating like some gifts. You know, if you follow like an MLB club, NBA club, you kind of are familiar with those types of accounts. It's pretty much yeah. similar. Uh, and then next thing you know, it's like, hey, let me start a podcast. And then, hey, how about I start a website? And this has just been all non -ex I mean, I am a journalism student and I, I graduated and then I've worked for a couple of outlets. So it's not like I'm too, I'm not, I'm not too, you know, I'm not a noob at this, but I, I've been flying at the seat of my pants. Just been, it's just been a roller coaster ride. I started this in like 2019. And it was a perfect way because we won the league, uh, the Apertura League, like later on in that year. 
So it was a good way to start it. Uh, and then it's just been magical. I've gotten to know some really good people. Uh, some people tell me within the club, they appreciate the coverage in English. Finally got the club to start an, uh, an English account uh, during the Leafs Cup last year. So definitely it's been a it's been a wild experience with with this uh you know it's just sometimes you just start a twitter account you start something from scratch and you don't think it's going to take off and then hold and behold it takes off so eddie i was this is jason i was watching some of the press coverage of, of vasquez kind of arriving in monterey and um get, being mobbed by reporters it is he going to be under a lot of pressure there to succeed and succeed quick or do you think the fans are going to give him some time to get acclimated? Uh, I think there's going to be a portion that let him adapt. But in the process, or, you know, in Vasquez arriving, Monterey did say goodbye to Rogelio Funes Mori. So I'm not saying he's coming in to replace, uh, you know, one of the top players in the club's history. But there's going to be that measuring stick now, like, hey, Especially if Funes Mori too, he's he's staying in in in, Le- in Mexico. He's playing for, for Pumas now, so there's going to be whether you know it's it's more than likely going to be media driven. The comparison to see okay how's Vasquez doing compared to Funes Mori, which for me isn't fair because if Monterrey does get a, a a left midfield or a left winger, whatever you want to call it, then. Vasquez kind of becomes that super sub or that rotational striker with Herman Betrame. But if if Monterrey does not get that left midfielder or that left winger, then I think they'll, they'll move Betrame, who was playing that position last year, and then they'll put in Vasquez as the as the starting striker. So right now it's I, I, I think that I I, I want to say most fans are gonna be patient, but at the same time, this club is championship or bust you got to win the league or it's a failure Mm -hmm. so you know especially with the amount of money they invest in i kind of understand it so definitely gonna there's gonna be pressure i i want to hope that not a lot of people or people decide hey this guy's for right now maybe going to be a super sub if 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 monterey gets their their left winger left midfielder uh before the uh the winter transfer window closes so but yeah there's definitely going to be a higher up pressure just because of the mentality there, it's champ. It's you know, win the trophy or bust. And just just to add to that, for uh, FC Cincinnati fans out there, uh, Mori had been with Monterey for eight years, 132 goals with them, with a ton of hardware. So he he is a bit of a club legend at this point in the modern era. Yeah, no, it was uh, for me. It was it was time to close the cycle. I think you know when you're you root for an MLS team or a Latin American team, you kind of know that this isn't Europe. So players staying eight years is, is pretty much on the, it's, it's the excessive, you know, part of it, but you know, it was time to close the chapter and, and get younger at that position. He's 32 going on 33 this year. And so it was time to, to usher in a, you know, a new era and, and Vasquez is going to be part of it. You guys have a lot of competitions. Um, coming up here, so like, what's what's the priority um, among among your uh, among your fans? You know, do you take you know the FIFA Club World Cup the most seriously? Uh, the Concacaf obviously is probably uh, right around the corner here. Your 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 seasons. You know, what are fans looking at here is important. You got to win everything. <laughs> you, you got when they invest so much. The, the whole point of getting Vasquez is to have two good strikers. Even if you want to add in Rodrigo Aguirre, who's kind of on the, he's on the bad graces of, of the fans just because he hasn't lived up to to you know what people kind of expect out of him. But what, what Monterrey's whole process is, we need two players that can compete at the same position. Especially now that you're going to have two competitions at the same time, we can rotate, and we're not going to drop off either in in the Concacaf. Or in in the domestically because especially now that Concacaf changed their format now usually maybe in the first two rounds you could kind of skate by with your B team but not anymore you, obviously they're facing a, a Guatemalan side and then next thing you know if you know Cincinnati advances then you then you know you really can't throw out a B squad and and hope that you're going to advance I feel like now they kind of understand hey we need two players that. At, at each position that can compete and nothing's going to drop off. So I feel like that's the whole mindset is that, Hey, we got to win both tournaments. There's no excuse not to, especially, you know, if they get everything that they want. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's not prioritizing. It's just, you got to win both. Uh, it's, you know, anything else would be probably seen 
as a as a failure. Yeah, I mean, while on the topic, what did you think of League's Cup last year? Since it was, you know, the first time either uh, Americans or or, or Liga Mekki mm-hmm. fans have seen that tournament. Uh, I was, I know, I was surprised when FC Cincinnati kind of advanced in two games. And it seemed like uh, MLS clubs started strong and maybe maybe had a little gap there. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, just what, what's the overall feeling about League's Cup? Um, it was a good novelty, but I, I feel like, obviously, this was a cash grab. It, it, nobody's going to, you know, <laughs> there's no denying it wasn't a cash grab, but I, I yeah. liked it. I just wish they would have kind of spread it out like an FA Cup or a Carabao Cup, something like that similar style, rather than, hey, let's, Let's rush it all in in one month and a half, and then just it's all going to be played in the U.S. Right? It's I feel like if they would have done something similar to that, it would have been it, it would have been nice. But just rushing everything in uh, really wasn't my favorite part of it. I mean, I did see Monterey, you know, come back against the LAFC, so I can't you know be too hypocritical on it. But I I liked it. I like I like. I mean, obviously, as a Mexican supporter or you know, supporter of a Mexican club, I would like to go back to like Libertadores and Sudamericana because that's what I grew up on. Mm-hmm. But if for just if it's not possible, then I have to accept the reality, which is okay. Con- you know, MLS and, and Liga MX have to push each other because that's what the way it is. We're it's just geography, right? We're we're, we're hijacked or we're, we're prisoners of geography here. We can't compete about with South American sides, at least, you know for sanctioned tournaments just because it, it's a really it's it, the traveling would be too much all for for players and all that stuff i get it but i i like the, the least cup i just wish they would have gone about it putting it in a different way than just jamming it into like one full month and making it a world cup style right um eddie real quick question i'm always looking for new teams to follow um, so I follow a team in England. I follow a team in Scotland. Obviously I'm following a team here in the U S pitch to me and maybe other FCC fans, why we should follow Monterey over, you know, Chivas or Tigres or, or somebody like some other team like that. Yeah. I mean, oh, Brandon Vasquez. Uh, besides <laughs> Brandon Vasquez. Uh, I mean, you're, you're going to go, you're, I mean, Monterey, obviously this team is going to spend a lot of money. I mean, they're going to spend a lot of money to to win. They're going to be rooting for a club that's at least trying to compete and trying to, you know, bring in really good players. It's not always going to work out. I would compare it maybe to like the Knicks um, in the NBA, or it's like, we're going to spend a lot of money, but we're going to disappoint you. And that's how it's been. And now this new regime is hoping that, hey, let's change it up. Maybe we can spend money, but let's spend it wisely and let's spend it on, on good quality players and not just... We have this saying in Spanish. Um, I'm going to say it in Spanish. So apologies if, if nobody understands it, but trayendo a, uh, a los billetazos, which means it translates to we're going to bring you, be, we're going to just throw a lot of money at you and you're just, you just cannot say no. Uh, but def- this, def- this is a club that will definitely, you, you will try to compete every tournament. They're going to bring in really good players. It's a nice stadium, as you guys uh, alluded to earlier. Uh, world, you know, it's a World Cup stadium, actually, too. But definitely the fan base is, is really loud. Um, you know, if you don't want to root for the club, for me, Club America is like the only biggest club in Mexico uh, or, or, you know, none of the other popular teams that are located in Mexico City, which is Cruz Azul, Pumas, or the other popular team, which is Chivas. Uh, definitely Monterrey is seen as like the the new rich boys on the team just because they are owned by FEMSA, which is a really large corporation in Mexico that owns like a lot of different companies. So definitely a team that's going to, you know, get a lot of financial support. But not one of like the historical big clubs, right? It's, it's it has its they have their own history, uh, but yeah, definitely if you don't want to root for a club America or, or or one of the popular teams, definitely a club that 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 should pique your interest. They're going to compete. They're going to bring in good players, uh, and the, but they have eighty percent of the chance they're probably going to break your heart and frustrate you. So yeah, I, like I said, it's it's it, 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 we it's like the Knicks. It's like these teams in, in, in different sports in the, in the U S where they'll spend a lot of money, but they'll disappoint you. Uh, you know, we're hoping this new regime kind of, you know, changes things around. We've only won one league title in, in the last, you know, last decade or so. So definitely just because we spend a lot of money doesn't mean we're going to win a lot of league titles. I mean, CONCACAF, they, they've kind of dominated even then where we consider disappointments. They've gotten two CONCACAF titles. So 
definitely going to compete for for trophies. Uh, just expect some some disappointment. The, heart, the heartbreak sounds that's music to my ears being a Cincinnati sports fan. <laughs> <laughs> so if we want to, if we want to watch this heartbreak as a, uh, uh, you know, you, you live in the States, what's the best way to watch? Uh, right, it does. uh, right now it's to the end. Um, they were on Fox sports and Fox Deportes, but uh television deal, they, they returned back to, to do the end. If definitely, if you want to follow, I, I highly recommend uh Fubo TV. Um, I have like this Hispanic package or whatever it's called. Uh, so definitely that's like my, my, that's all my soccer right there that I mostly get there. So definitely if you want to watch them, I'm not, you know, hopefully, you know, if FUBU TV wants to sponsor you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys wouldn't say no, so, but this isn't, <laughs> this isn't an ad spot. They don't sponsor me either, but yeah. that's just the way I, I, I watch it just because it's easier. So if you want to follow them, especially, you know, like I said, they're going to more than likely, you know, FC Cincinnati is going to be playing, uh, Monterey, hopefully in, in the coming months. So if you at least want to just scout the team that, that that could be playing you guys definitely just you know check them out and see what what's all about i mean they have really good players um you know you got hector hector moreno Jesus Gallardo, mexican side uh definitely we have sergio canales who played with real betis uh headman Betram. If, if anybody watched the league's cup he was ter- you know he was lighting it up on fire against uh real salt lake and and seattle Saunders before he got injured against the portland team. but yeah definitely really good players that uh, you know, at least you're going to be entertained. Uh, we, I can't guarantee you titles, but you're going to be entertained. Mm-hmm. Eddie, uh, before I, before we let you go, I just have to ask: a lot of our fans might make that trip if we do end up met, meeting up in the Concacaf Champions Cup. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've seen the iconic uh, photos of the mountains oh, in your yeah. stadium. What would be a good section to sit in to <laughs> observe such a grand? I mean, I I, I I I I haven't been there. I haven't been to the new stadium. I've 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 gone to the old one. I've just time hasn't allowed me to go. Um, but definitely, I can ask people. Like, if I just put it out on Twitter, you're gonna get a lot. Of, like, I I think that's what I've liked about the Monterey community is that they'll they'll welcome anybody. Uh, you know, when I created this account, I didn't know people who are not just Mexican American or Mexicans would follow this account. Regular Americans, I've had some different people in the U.S. say, "Hey, I've been following this team since the 1990s." So, uh, if 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 anybody, whether they want to make the trip, if hopefully you know we're lucky enough to face each other, I definitely if somebody if you guys need need, need any you know recommendations, I can just put that out, and you're gonna have people more than welcome you, telling you, "Hey, this do you, you know this is the section you want." Or this is what you need to try in the stadium or anything else, whether, you know, if you're going for a day or two, they'll tell you, hey, this is some good restaurants or whatever you guys need. Definitely just don't hesitate to reach out. I'll, I'll put it out there and people are more, more 99% of the time, they're more than welcome and say, hey, this is what you got to do and everything else because they've welcomed me, you know, all these people. I've never met them in my life, but they've been welcoming. And, and I pr- really think they'll do the same with any FC Cincinnati supporters who who want to make the trip. You know, hopefully it happens because it would be a good matchup. It would be a nice two leg match. But but definitely, um, you know, if, if if any supporter does make the trip, I'll definitely put it out there and make make their lives a little bit more easier. Mm, you just wear a, just wear an FCC Vasquez jersey. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm looking forward to. I'm I'm hoping that that matchup happens. I think it'll be absolutely fantastic. Uh, thanks for um, giving us all that rundown and history. Sometimes we get so caught up in our own teams and our own leagues and we don't pay attention. But hey, uh, I just want to let you know, FC Cincinnati consistently rakes in the top 10 when it comes to national team games and major league soccer games. And so don't be surprised if all of a sudden. Uh, they put out like this uh, uh, American teams watching Monterey, and then you just see Cincinnati way up there now. That yeah, that, no, that I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> definitely going to be keeping an eye on that. I'm like I said, I'm I'm, I'm excited mm-hmm. for this matchup, and hopefully, you know, we get, we can have a long conversation for you know and dissect it, you know, even further. So really appreciate you guys having me, or you know, really appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, thanks for swinging by, Eddie Brian. If you don't have anything else, we'll uh, we'll jump into. Uh, what we have going on here next first we want to give a shout out to beyond exercise if you want to know where brandon vasquez was training right up until he the moment he left cincinnati it was uh with our good friend eric over at beyond exercise and uh, he was getting his treatment there uh, really honestly uh, to, uh, a week before he left and that's because of their great physical therapy and strength training uh fc cincinnati players head there during the off season and currently they are offering a $50 discount for their ACL 
injury prevention screening, which was piloted with Nick and Brandon. Learn more at gobeyondexercise.com. You can, of course, uh, get in touch with us uh, since feedback at cincinnatisoccertalk.com or tweet us at cincysoccertalk. Thanks for hanging in there again. Uh, we had more roster news. Actually, you know what I'm concerned about, guys? I'm concerned about all of these players that still uh, futures are up in the air, like like Santoso. Uh, my, my words are not working all of a sudden. But Arias, why is Arias not resigned yet? Am I crazy? Am I missing news? Is this is this still pending? We, we need to bring him home, as Jean Valjean said. Bring him home. <laughs> I saw um a Nashville the, the Nashville reporter that Ben Wright guy. He put out his listing of like uh, players. He's doing it for like every team of like who's a hit, who who's a great player, who's overrated, and you can replace. He has Arias as good player, but totally can be replaced. Brian, is that true, or do we need to bring him back? He offers a lot of quality. He he knows how to play um, top end talent, and you know you just saw his presence when we played Miami, and how he was able to deal with those guys mentally, mentally, physically, and just the knowledge of the game. Um, I think at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to to how Pat Noonan wants to play. Um, you know, with Brandon leaving, uh, you don't have a tar- really a, an out and out target striker. So, you know, are you guys? going to try to bring in more forwards that can kind of play on the wing? Are you going to try to, to bring in another target? Uh, you know, does that look with, with miles Robinson, do we go into a four, four, two when you kind of want, um, uh, your fullbacks to play at home a little bit more? I think that kind of fits, uh, Arias a little bit when he's a little older guy, you know, he can maybe pick his times a little bit better. So, um, I would like to see him, him brought back, uh, just for the fact that he knows how to, you know, stick Jordi Alba a little bit. And, uh, you know, those are some good battles versus Miami this year. Yeah. And building in our center back depth, we don't have to worry about Arias slotting over to center back this year. So Arias played that, center back this year. He did uh, a few. I think it was like a 15 minute shout. Yeah. Well, I'm blacking was... that out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. No, I, but that may be incentive. It's like, hey, we we have our stuff together. You can go play. You can roam. <laughs> I, I just don't see, and in, in, unless you can go out and get a another proven guy for five hundred, six hundred k, I mean, it, it's tough to improve over what he what he can give you. Um, unfortunately, he's he's shown several times that he can't withstand a, a long season. Um, but I mean, the dude's played himself back and then uh, onto, onto his, his, um, national team. I, I don't see any reason why, you know, if the price is right, that we don't do it. And you think that's what it is. It just boils down to price. He's, he's eligible for a re-entry draft with major league soccer. I would, I, I just can't imagine a team not picking him up. Uh, that happened already. Um, <laughs> did it? there's only so much time. Um, uh, there's only, s- I got to re- reboot myself. Um, there's only so much, there's so many Max Tam players we can get on this roster, Boston. And uh, unfortunately, we've hit our limit there. So bringing him in for 600, 800K, man. Uh, maybe the uh, the signing of Gam that we made, <laughs> maybe that's going to go to help <laughs> pay him pay him off or something. I don't know. Well, I'm clearly, I'm clearly wrong because no one did obviously pick him up. But... Yeah, yeah, he's just kind of one of those. It's kind of one of those deals where you you look at a guy like him, and you you can't like you can't be like RSL and just go, oh, we got RS. Like RS is going to make your life a living hell. He he will only play. He's a type of player, and he's earned this that he will play where he wants to play. Mm. And just like Miles Robinson, if he wants to come here and play in Mm -hmm. in Cincinnati and win titles and fight in Concacaf Champions Cup, let let let's keep him. Or bring them back. I mean, the club did put out that statement at the end of the year. Like they, they clearly hinted at the players they're still negotiating with, they're still working with. You think Junior Mourinho makes a return, or is 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 it is it gone? I would be, I would be less surprised to see Arias back than Moreno. I think Moreno could go somewhere else in the league and possibly make more money. Um than what FC Cincinnati is willing to pay him at this point. Um, Don't forget length of contract too. That too. Um, I I think there are a lot of teams in MLS 
who could really use Junior Moreno. And if we're going to change up our formation, then I think you can get around having Moreno or not having Moreno. I, I think that is a I, – if we go to a diamond, I don't see Moreno coming back. But that's just my speculation. I, I want a more athletic guy in, in the middle of the park. And Moreno's, Moreno's awesome, guys. Let, let's be yeah, real. He's like, very good. Oh, you know, every team in MLS wants Moreno, but not every team wants to pay him what he has. So they're always looking to replace him. And at some point with, with us, we spent that bucket of money on Marco Angulo, and you have to let the kids sink or swim. Mm-hmm. And that's that has to be part of the equation. Um, if we get to the point where we're starting to get into mid-January, I mean, camp opens here in like 10 days, um, and he's not signed, I think that dollar value goes, same thing with Arias, that dollar value goes down, the length of contract demand goes down. Um, I mean, that's not great for him and, and I'm all always supporting players getting, you know, the most they can, but, uh, the longer this, you know, while, while we are celebrating everything going on with bringing on some of these early moves, like that's a move like you kind of want to pull, put out there a little bit if, if, if you're still looking to improve. Mm. Well, you know, I don't know about you guys, but uh, we're, we're Chris Albright. We got to we got to throw him out of this club. He's completely worth this. He let, <laughs> he, let he let Mascara go back to the Wolves <laughs> and and our entire team is falling apart. I can't believe Chris Albright would drop a ball that bad. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm kidding, obviously. But man, it is a bummer. I mean, I, I want to talk about a player that I like fell in love with last year. Uh, Mascara is my guy. Um, and uh, I, I, I get we got Miles Robinson. That's a huge huge piece coming in but in some way some deep down i'm gonna i'm really gonna miss uh mascara not being out there and the and the the for the ferociousness he brought to the game the the first yellow card and then and then always wondering if he'd get the second and he somehow managed to, to behave himself uh, I, I don't know i just i love watching him play he's a great he's a great player he got some time in the fa cup this past weekend if i recall correctly no, he he got on. The, he was on the bench. On the he, bench, it, it, yeah. they got a red card early. I think it was the eighth minute or something like that. Mm. So defensive structure just never was going to be a thing. Mm. But that's that's still good that he went straight from FCC and he's at least being put on the bench for FA Cup. So you know, I, I'm I'm with you, boss, and I'm going to miss him dearly. But you know, it was a loan, and the chances of him coming back were slim to none mm. after the season he had. Um, Wolves is either going to let him play or they're going to try to sell him on for some some more money because he he can certainly earn it. It shows you that Wolves doesn't listen to FC Cincinnati Twitter. <laughs> Our uh, campaign of Arson and he just is terrible. He needs another year at FC Cincinnati. <laughs> just did not work. That Ever- yeah, he he's he's an incredible talent. We we all had the privilege to watch that. He's raw. You can still see that. But uh, Yerson's going to have a great career. And it seems like Wolves have a mature way of handling how they want to progress him. They're, they're looking to loan him out uh, in the championship. So that's that's going to be a next step for him uh, to be able to see if he could play the similar styles that the Premier League have. And Wolves, hopefully, are going to try to stay up. And we'll see Yerson in the uh, Premier League one day. There's people hating on his acting skills in the comments right now, but I'm telling you what, man, I thought. I mean, it... MLS changed the rules directly because of Yerson Mascara, so let's, <laughs> let's not forget that <laughs> two-minute penalty box now. It's better than Oppenheimer, I'm just saying. So, the uh, uh, everybody, the, the other question I'm seeing on here is, when are you going to talk about the left back situation? I don't know. I don't know what left back situation you're talking about. We have, we have a left. Yeah, back. He's, he's still on the club. Yeah, That's like, eleven. I'm fully, I'm fully expecting uh, Barry all back out there. What about you, Bright? In Brett Halsey, we trust. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't expect him back. Um, I mean, he was really linked with Lens, uh, RC Lens in France. I think that's kind of gone a different different way. I think they uh, potentially are going out and get somebody else. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that that Alvaro is going to get an opportunity somewhere. It's it's just, you know, with Brandon, we were blessed to get eight and a half million dollars for him when we probably should have got six. And I think we were hoping to get six for Alvaro, and we might get four or five. I, I don't know how it's going to go. Um, he sold all his possessions in Cincinnati, sold his car, moved out of his apartment. Uh, I, I don't expect Alvaro back, and, and he deserves he deserves this. It's not like mm-hmm. a, a, a Brenner being an entitled wanker. Uh, he's mm-hmm. just, Alvaro's earned everything, and I think FCC 
you, you have to make these decisions. Like you'll, you, it's going to work out financially in the positive regardless. I mean, we paid like what, 2 million bucks for him. Yeah. Now <laughs> Isaac Atanga, 4 million bucks. That really was awesome. <laughs> but no, I, I, I think he's, he's blessed and we should cheer him on just like we're, we're going to cheer on Brandon. Yeah. I, what else could Barrell do in this league? I mean, he worked his way as an MLS all-star, you know, best of life. I don't know if he made the best of life. I'm pretty sure he did, uh, you know, had second award rec- yeah, second team, but recognitions galore. Everybody in the league respected him. I don't think there's any much more growth he can do. I'm not discrediting MLS, but just at that position, the left wing back, you kind of are limited to your involvement with the offense and possession. So I think this is strike away the iron's hot. FC Cincinnati and Royal are on lockstep here. He could have got the shorts yeah. up a little higher, I think. Yeah, Jason. Was that a Kana I, or was that a Boston? <laughs> Skies out, thighs out, guys. That's, that's how Barrial rolls. Um, the next step for him, though, was designated player. Like, really, that that was the only way you were going to be able to keep him in Major League Soccer. And not a lot of teams are going to be throwing out that kind of money for that. I don't, I don't even know if they can because of his time in the league, right? Is is he is he? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Salary cap tied, was, essentially. Well, he was a U twenty two when he first came in, wasn't he? And so there might there might be something there where it allows you to do that. But you know, if he were true, like playing true winger, yeah, maybe he get that DP money. But he's a wing back, and and honestly, I think that's what's maybe hurting him a little bit in Europe is he came into FC Cincinnati as a winger and a midfielder, and he adapted very well into that wing back position. But I, maybe a lot of European clubs are looking at that and saying, Oh, we don't need that position. We need a winger or we need a midfielder or something like that. So I, I'm with Brian. I think it's going to work out for him. I wish him the best. Um, when that wall of honor is finally put up in TQL, I want to see Barrio's name on it. But yeah, it's uh, I, I feel bad that it hasn't happened yet for him. Well, I think the thing I'll miss the most, uh, if he if he truly is gone, obviously FC Cincinnati has him under contract and and is looking for the right price. And I think I, I'm with, I'm with you guys. I, I actually do think it'll happen. But I I will miss most the chemistry. That I can't you mm-hmm. can't argue that the biggest chemistry pieces on this club was Barrial to Acosta and Acosta to Barrial. And man, I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss that uh, chemistry. And you could almost always bank on it. There was not an off game between the two of them that I can remember. It was just a perfect pairing every single time. And we have to figure out a, a way to replace that. And that's yeah, no, don't worry about that. It's, it's Bupenza and Acosta 2024 <laughs> running mates. It's election year. So they're going to get it together. <laughs> They need a uh, a strong off season of bonding, you know. Like I remember the Titans training camp type of thing to get get everybody on board, uh, get them in a bubble, isolated, uh, where the, where they fall in love with each other and the team, and then bring them back to real life. That's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for here. <laughs> you know what I'm hoping for? Great, uh, great chemistry between our newest center back, Miles Effin Robinson. That's what we're <laughs> going to put on the back of his jersey, boys. I could not have been more psyched. When MLS, or sorry, when FC Cincinnati signed the premier MLS free agent of the 2023 2024 offseason, Miles Robinson. Guys, I think I tweeted this out. There's never been an instance in the history of the city where the premier free agent, yes, Griffey, was traded. Yeah. Not equal. Not equal. Trey Hendricks didn't know he was not the best free agent. Like the best free agent available came to Cincinnati. He wanted to come to Cincinnati. He had the ability to make more money with, you know, quote unquote, Super Club Atlanta, potentially a move abroad. But he came here because he thinks that we are the next, you know, the best scenario for him to succeed as a professional. And this guy's a top four center back in the U.S. pool. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a hell of an endorsement of your club. Am I right, guys? No, I, I tweeted out a uh, if you're a wrestling fan like me. You remember the tag team, the Legion of Doom, Hawk and Animal. They wore like the big God, spikes you're on old. their shoulders. You were so old. Oh. That was like, like super 80s and NES. 90s, man. Yeah. yeah. The greatest tag team of all time. But when they would enter, it just struck fear in their opponent. And that is Miazga 
and Miles Robinson walking out onto the pitch at TQL. I don't want the MLS Cup, the MLS anthem playing. I want the LOD theme playing when they walk out. I, I am so happy that we have that backline pairing right now. I'm going with the Brothers of Destruction. <laughs> That's, That's what I, I We got tall, physical guys. Obviously, you know, Miles Robinson is just a, a pedigree of talent. Um, he he does have some apprehension and stuff like that coming back from that injury. I think his step has been a little slow uh, toward the end of the MLS season. But obviously, with a, a season to be able to get in rhythm, see what uh, Pat Noonan and company want to do with that back line. We, we previously mentioned a two center back, three center back. Where are we going to go with that? Uh, but Miles Robinson, I mean, uh, we're talking about elite pedigree, uh, a great replacement, an absolute home run replacement for Yerson Mascaro. He he allows he allows us to be flexible, and I, I think I've said this towards the end of last year in s- several episodes. Is I want us to have that Philadelphia Union flexibility, where Pat Noonan, if he thinks that you know maybe we have a guy out on international duty and we need to play a, a three five two, he can do that. Or if we have the ability to try to hold possession a little bit more, go toe to toe with Miami versus kind of holding on to games, we can go to that four four two diamond or whatever shape he wants to do. And I think having a guy like him who's athletic enough to, you know, to 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 push up the field if he needs to, uh, he can play as the center center back of a back three. He can play as a left center back of a back four. Um, I, I think it's a tremendous piece. Don't don't hate on his his ball playing ability. The guy can dribble. The guy can pass. The guy's dangerous in the box with his head. Um, uh, I think this is if you could pull everybody in Major League Star- Soccer circles, this was the best fit um, to you know re- what kind of what you said, Justin, to replace yours and mascara with somebody who's just as good. One of those success brings success stories. Cincinnati has made TQL an amazing place to play. I mean, this is a guy who played in Atlanta in front of huge crowds, and he still thought enough of uh, our environment here, our team here, obviously winning um, and being on a team with Lucho Acosta and players like that has has helped him make this decision. But uh, Atlanta got the first offer and gave him the exact same amount of money. They had to have they, cause they made an offer for him and he he's, he's, he has a max contract amount. So uh, he turned that offer down, chose to take the exact same amount of money for him. Maybe and, slightly lower. Yeah. Just slightly. If there was, I mean, it, it's, it's, I, I really want to know that, that sales pitch that Albright gave him. But I, I think part of it has to be with kind of what I was alluding to with Brandon, the ability to play. Mm-hmm. The ability to show yourself off for the next six months, build your fitness, get into that that rotation for Copa America. And then when Copa America happens, if you stick messy or if you play good against Brazil or whoever, the eyeballs are on you. And then instead of going to PSV, now your ceiling is Premier League. Okay? So, I mean, he's betting on himself a little bit here, I think. And I love having a guy with that mentality. Hopefully, yeah, I, I'm imparting that on him, so that's probably not fair. But I mean, he's he's betting on himself by coming here to you know if he wants to move higher than what he's able to do. I mean, I think it's tremendous. Uh, but potential. I heard that he was not betting on himself by sticking. Oh in the shoot! <laughs> that Ted he, needed to, he needed to go play at some mid-level Dutch team, mm-hmm. and yeah. And he's just ruined his career by signing this. I mean, the, I, I'm not trying I to. I, 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 I'm USMNT, but I'm not trying to bash on the community when I say it's like the always sunny in Philadelphia meme where he's sitting there with the board and stuff. Like, no one understands what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> I mean, they're caught, they're actively contradicting themselves in a week. Like, I mean, Brandon Vasquez's news and Robinson's news came out at the same time. And it's just like, where do you want him to go? Is every player is supposed no. to go to the prim? Is that the only way that we're yeah. going to we, we celebrate PSV. What is PSV going to get? Miles Robinson. They're going to dunk on everybody that they play in league and then go over and play in Europe mm-hmm. and, you know, sputter out in group stages. It's, it's, it's kind of pointless. Not to probably. bring it up, but didn't we send one of our best goalkeepers over to English Premier League just to sit 
fourth fourth in the in the lineup and sit and sit and sit. And now now Colorado Rapids is is a good option for him. Hey, I'm all for selling our best players uh, abroad as long as we get a ten million dollar check. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's all I'm here <laughs> one for. thing I think. Last thing on on Robinson. Um, one thing I think you guys didn't mention though is we talked all last year about center back depth being an issue. Now we have depth because you have two guys um, with if, if you play just two center backs, but we'll probably play three. But you now have Murphy. And you have Nick Haglin once he's back from injury that are, are solid players that now you've got an extra guy there that you can slide in. Would love to see more depth as we get moving forward, but I, I think that's a, that's a good back four. Is this extra depth Kip Keller? Extra no. depth Kip Keller. Yeah, that's right. We I was just trying to figure out, you know, same amount of players. Yeah, we, we got Kip Keller. U.S. Open Cup, here he comes. Man. Well, and there's more time. Man. We're not. Well, this lineup is nowhere near set. We still have right. plenty of, plenty of time and plenty of players to bring in. Uh, we need we need depth. We still need some midfield players. We need a left back. If if you uh, believe that uh, he moved out, like Brian says, then uh, yeah, plenty of time here. I mean, just, no big deal. No rush. February is just around the corner. <laughs> uh, that is pretty crazy, though. I, I mean, we. Uh, we have a early present this year with um, the this Concacaf Champions League, and uh, FC Cincinnati is going to get a jump start on the season by being ready. I I don't know if we're going to have a hundred percent of our team though no. in February. So I, we- I don't think we will have our other main striker until the summer window. I, I think we're going to be talking about that unless something happens with with the youth player we're talking about, but. Um, and Corey yeah, Baird for life, baby. Yeah, I mean, I he played at RSL when I lived out there, so I I am happy to have Corey Baird on the squad. Mm-hmm. He is a great depth piece, and uh, he's Thank much you. more much more mobile than Brandon Vasquez can cover a lot more ground. So he adds a little bit of an extra wrinkle to his game that I think ba- that Vasquez uh, didn't have. Vasquez infinitely more talented. And more physical, but Baird is going to be able to slot into some different roles. I think somebody asked me online, and we're talking about the former Houston Dynamo uh, starting forward, hopefully our third, for maybe spot starter, second starter for for FC Cincinnati this year, Corey Baird. Um, somebody was like asking me what the success for him is, and I don't know if it's 10, 15 starts. Um, Somebody's asked me to put a goal number on it. I could care less how many goals Corey Bear has this year. I mean, I, I mean, I want him to succeed, but I want his input to make Bupenza's output better. Mm-hmm. Like, I want Bupenza to be golden boot, and that's because Corey Baird is working very well with Bupenza, passing, drawing runs, getting the ball to him in the right spots. Just kind of like what we were talking about with – Lucho and, and Brenner at points, you know, finding the best ways. And I think that'll make Corey Baird or whoever that second striker is better. But it gives us a different style of player. Mm. One that we hoped Santos was going to be um, with, you know, some speed, some pace, running at players, but also pressing and mm. doing the dirty work. Yeah, I mean, to touch on Jason's point and just hammer it home a little bit more, we just don't, I mean, we don't play two guys. Like, everybody thinks about Bupenza and they thought about Brandon Vasquez, but you saw a lot of Baji, you saw a lot of Santos, you saw oh, FC Cincinnati only, especially Pat Noon, and it's just not his style to leave these guys out there both for 90 minutes. So you're going to have subs, you're going to have more starters, you're going to have more players. We, we, we could use up to four decent solid forwards and so if we have four great options at forward we're better we're a better team than last year yeah we 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 had 11 different uh forward pairings in the season through all competitions and we only had two moves during the season so with Brenner going out and Bupenza coming in so that I mean he loves to rotate his guys yeah all right, and then, of course, we uh, picked up the biggest trade of all. I mean, I, I hate to put uh, the Brandon Vasquez news down and um, the new center back news down, but, guys, we picked up $75,000 in GAM this week. And, uh, you know, I know we get like a million dollars in GAM that we're allowed to use after the Brandon Vasquez trade, but that's, you know, what's bigger, 75000 or a million? Come on. <laughs> Don't spend it all in one place. That's all I got to say. 
I, I love um, the shenanigans on some of the stuff as long as we're on the receiving end. You know, when we're the when we're the team paying seventy five thousand dollars for absolutely no reason because somebody has a a player on a list, I get all pissed. But but when it's us, then it's all fine and well. And it seems like lately, in the last year and a half since Albright's been here, it's been us on the receiving end of this stuff. Uh, what, which one of you said it earlier today when we were talking? Um, maybe MLS will have to change the rules again because Albright broke, <laughs> broke, 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 broke the last rules. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it, it, yeah. If it, if in some way it would benefit Miami, they will change the rules again. Mm. I was Miami, trying. if Miami needed, you know, a allocation spot or something. I was surprised to see a discovery list uh, hit already because MLS did drop the list in half. Like I think you used to have like 10 people. Now you can only have five, if I remember right. Yeah. This this year they made it rule change. So they are shrinking those discovery lists a little bit. Um, yet, uh, apparently this guy was one of our five. So that's cool. <laughs> it's just nice to have a GM that understands what the TAM and the WHAM and the GAM and the, the BAM is all about. And knows how to, to pull those levers. Yeah, yeah, and and all of this. In case you wonder, like, why are we excited about this? Why, you know, why do we care about the gas, the Vasquez money? Why do we care about uh, seventy five thousand dollars in a in a BS list trade? Um, it's because this is like some of the most valuable money you can you can have in Major League Soccer. It allows you to buy contracts down um you basically it allows you to cheat the salary cap that's what this money is you, you, you get you get a pile of money and you can use it to get your players under a salary cap that you otherwise couldn't do and so uh, if we trade barrial i think uh, correct me if i'm wrong that gives us even more uh, money to play with and so uh, all of that is is great and it, 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 it basically means we can go out there and get um 900 and thousand dollar players when normally we'd only have to have a six hundred thousand dollar player type of stuff so just the um little bit of info you may already know uh brian is there any other rumors out there that we should uh, let our fans be aware of i want you to fellas justin do you write those notes or is that jason i don't know uh, we had some uh i guess rumors on um on uh, line this past week with Luifer Hernandez out of Venezuela, who's a Ford, scored 36 goals in 116 matches. Young guy, I think he's about to be 23 this spring. Uh, certainly a, a decent option. Uh, there's been a lot of smoke, I think, on that uh, recently um, on uh, on the, on the Twitterverse. But yeah, it seems like it's you know more some some fire there. Yeah, it seems to have some traction. I've seen some reports, and it's starting to catch on multiple outlets uh, not associated with the MLS. So that always is a good sign whenever you're seeing, you know, a little bit more reputable accounts kind of catch on to the stories and, and really pass it along. You know, we're all waiting for that uh, Tommy bomb, you know, where we just where we, we know exactly what's going on. Um but it, also, there was another hint at uh, Francisco Gonzalez, uh, Newell's old boys, Argentina, another winger. Uh, that would, in my opinion, kind of what FC Cincinnati, if they are not looking to replace Mario with a like for like, I think we need some winger options. So that would be an interesting one to track there. Apparently, younger player, not necessarily a goal scorer, but it's definitely, 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 according to to my very short observations, very good at delivery into the box, which is something we are desperately going to miss mm -hmm. with Barial being gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably the biggest area of concern, Ray, is we, we had a winger that could serve those dimes. And um, thanks uh, for the update, though. Um, I, I'm I'm terrible, absolutely terrible at rumors. So this is why we you used to be myself. great, man, when you're on the Reddits. <laughs> what happened to you? For real. Your old age. That's what that's what happened, right? You there. have a job that actually has to work forty hours a week now. Oof, what have I done? Uh, United States men's national team call up, Jason. Uh, I, I've seen some comments. Uh, we talked about a little bit earlier, but uh, then we got little chat comments. Department of Defense. What do you think about that? With with the three U.S. <laughs> men's national team defensive call ups. I think it's awesome. I mean, this is what they affectionately call Camp Cupcake. So it's where guys who are, you know, a little down, further down on the depth chart get called up. But 
there have been instances where Camp Cupcake has been used to identify people who then um, move up in the the depth chart. Um, God, why, why Jordan Morris, I want to say, was originally a Camp Cupcake guy and eventually became a starter. Um, there have been dual nationals that have been captured. So who knows? Like um, I, We talked about Miles Robinson. He's already pretty high on the depth chart. But for guys like Roman and Ian Murphy, that this is a good opportunity for them to to show what they got. And who knows? Maybe as we move forward with the Copa America, we could see a Celentano, maybe second, third goalkeeper. Probably not, but maybe. Mm. How so, how about that for two 2022 draft picks getting called up to US? That's pretty. That's pretty awesome. I mean, that's that's incredible. What what a great job that scouting department does. You think you're excited for uh, Miles Robertson? Ask somebody. Ask Roman Salantano what he thinks about it, because <laughs> he's probably the person that gets to benefit the most. Uh, all right, uh, I think that's been an out. Wow, that's flew by. So let's go ahead and get your final thoughts. If you have anything else you want to throw in, now is the time. We'll start with you, Justin. Out of that one, I I have. Uh, the series on FC or uh, Cincinnati Soccer Talks um, website called uh, Orange and Blue P- Profiles. I have quite a few responses back with that. I have interviews that were conducted and performed. Uh, it looks like I'm probably going to finish out what's already in the queue. Thank you so much for your feedback. Um, look for those to resume after the holidays here uh, weekly. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, I, I saw E in here. E was a wonderful. Go check out her uh, article on there. She she was great. Uh, I know Jose has uh, sat down with me. He's always in the chat, and so um, I really appreciate everybody who's reached out and sharing their story with me. <coughs> yeah, thanks so much. Uh, I've enjoyed those. Uh, I haven't told you personally, but yeah, it's been nice to go to sensatesoccer.com in the off season and find something just besides rumors or new sightings or, you know, that type of stuff. It's been an awesome uh, addition. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, do exactly what Justin says. And and, and that's uh, coming from somebody who didn't write it and really appreciated it. So uh, appreciate it. All right, Jason. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, great time this past weekend. I know some of us got together at uh, Grainworks and kind of had a CST get together. Big thanks to Brian and uh, Boston for putting that together. That was awesome, you guys. Uh, but it was it was great to bump into some of you all who uh, listen to the podcast and sponsor the podcast. Um, I know Brian's going to probably talk about another event coming up soon, but it's always great to see you all, and uh, it made the offseason a little more pleasant because it, it's kind of cold and dark this winter, and I'm ready to get back out to TQL and be around my fellow FCC fans. Yeah, I think I think there would have been more people there that would have uh, that are like Patreon supporters, but uh, somehow the message didn't go all the way through. <laughs> Clifford Adams, I messaged him the day before, and I was like, "Did you get? Did you get the message I sent out?" And he's like, "Huh?" And he goes and he looks and he goes, "Yeah, I did, but it's like buried. It got." He's like, it got all uh, trapped or something. I'm not even sure it went fully out. So uh, we will we will have something else coming up here shortly, um, an event. So if you didn't catch this one, you can catch the next one. Brian? Uh, first off, uh, shout out to Ian Murphy. Um, the dude put in so much work, didn't get a ton of uh, playing time earlier in the year. Turned that around uh, during the summer with League's Cup and uh, – Man, I, I couldn't have been happier seeing his name on that U.S. Uh, that sheet. So uh, that's my first final thought, man. That's it's a hell of an accomplishment for you, and hopefully it breeds more success. Second thing, uh, my, one of my favorite things every year is the Norden uh, scarf release and fundraiser. Uh, they do a, uh, a release party that comes with a raffle, split the pot, things like that, uh, out at Greenworks every year, and we're blessed to be able to uh, to return for another uh, 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 episode, I guess live episode there at Grainworks on Saturday, f- February 3rd. Uh, the event begins at 4. We go live at 5.30. And we're going to have a special guest, Jimmy McLaughlin, out there. So come join Norton at Grainworks out in Westchester. Should be a great evening. Um, raise money for St. Vincent de Paul Society down there in the West End. 
uh, see us. And then I do think the supporter shield is going to be there. So if you're uh, uh, wanting to go check that out, get that uh, that photo out there. You know, we aren't going to let uh, people have uh, Sky and Chili off of it. Uh, but uh, you never know. Maybe some mom of it or smack or something. But uh, very excited to be out there uh, for this special event. Uh, go check uh, the Norden uh, supporters group out on social media for more details. We gotta get Pat Noonan out there. You know, he's gotta fire the fans up before the season starts. Might have to put in I, some might have to call in some favors. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully he's in Florida getting the squad ready for Saudi Green Works, but you never know. Maybe we can uh we can convince uh, uh Chris Albright, who never makes any public appearances to come out. <laughs> Whoever's left, I guess. He's darn a man. Are, are you, man, that gets crazy to think about. They're gonna be preseason that early, huh? Like next week? Sheesh. I think the report's next week. I heard Monday, but I'm not, I can't confirm that. But yeah, definitely next week. Yeah. Rupesh is um, um, commenting on my ignorance in the chat. Yeah. I, I know. I'm still in off season mode. I'm, Rupesh I'm out does of not it. have a filter. I'm out of it. No. <laughs> no. There's no chill. But blatantly honest. But I, I deserve it today. I am a little bit out of it. I've been uh, working up a storm here these last few weeks and I, Diving back, I did. I did do a pretty deep dive in SC Cincinnati to try to catch up. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it, and uh, we actually are really looking forward to this season. We've been making some new writing plans and uh, and podcasting plans, trying to make sure we provide the best content that we can um, that you expect. And so uh, really want to make sure that every time you go to CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com, there's something there fresh for you. And uh, of course, on your podcast feeds, you know, we got our three main shows and I believe all three of those are coming back this year with, uh, with um, some awesome little pieces. I know uh, we're looking at, uh, if you have any suggestions, by the way, now's the time to get them in. You know, if you want to see a certain segment, you want to see something uh, that you've seen in the past, you'd like us to bring it back. You know, if you want Brian to bring his trivia game back, go ahead and uh, email us and uh, get that back in. None so. of you guys know USL trivia, any of it, though. It's, <laughs> it's half the fun. Yeah, there's a, there's some old there's some there's some pretty cool old segments. Uh, we could uh, we could always revisit every once in a while. So if you want to uh, do that, and if not, that's fine. We'll just keep doing what we're doing. We appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and we'll see you next. No, wait, I can't say that. I don't know when we'll be back. We'll be back eventually. <laughs>